start recording this session. Awesome. Very cool. Well, hello, everybody. I'm going to get started because we've got lots of stuff to talk about. I am Dr. Julie Fouché. I am one of the physicians at Wild Health. I think I recognize a lot of names of people on here. And I am really excited to talk about something called tapping, um, which I have found to be very useful for me personally um, in the last six months or so. And the more I've dug into the research and learn more about it, I realized that this is a really powerful tool and something that's very simple and accessible and something that I would love to share with more people so that hopefully you can try it and see if it's something that helps you as well. Um, I'm going to share a presentation here, um, but I do want for this to be interactive. So as I'm talking and we're going through, feel free to drop questions in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask any questions. And then we'll definitely have time for questions at the end as well. So excited for all of you to participate. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's see. All right, so here we go. So we're talking about tapping, which is otherwise known as emotional freedom technique. We're gonna talk about some of the science behind it and also some practical application. We'll get a chance to try it ourselves here. Um, like I said, this is something that I discovered for myself personally, probably about six months ago. I had heard of it years ago and thought it was kind of strange to see people tapping on their faces and I didn't really understand. And so I didn't look that much into it. But it was really a situation where one day I was feeling very overwhelmed, very anxious. I tried to meditate and it was just not going to work because I was so overwhelmed with all of the, um, the emotions. And I thought, you know what, I keep hearing about tapping. Let me just try it. And so I went and just Googled it and did a quick YouTube video. And I would say within three or four minutes, I could immediately feel my emotions and my anxiety and overwhelm start to settle. And it was very powerful. And so then I started to use it more often, um, looked a lot more into the science and the research and saw how this can be a really powerful tool. I think it's something that we can all have in our arsenal um, because there are so many different tools. You know, we talk about meditation, we talk about breath work, the role of things like exercise, and this is just another tool and something that we can easily use um, in the moment and can serve that role, especially when maybe the emotions are too high to be able to do something like meditation. All right, so we'll start with just what is emotional freedom technique or tapping. So essentially this is a method of using our fingers to tap gently on acupuncture points. And gen these are gonna be points just located in the neck or the head and the upper chest. And while we do that, we're bringing negative thoughts or emotions into our consciousness and becoming aware of them, accepting them, um, and then moving into a more positive state. It can be either self-administered, so we're going to learn how to do it on ourselves today. You can also work with a practitioner um, and they can talk you through it and through the different steps. And it's used for a variety of different applications. So most commonly things like anxiety, stress, pain, um, things like cravings, things like phobias, um, PTSD, depression are all things that have been studied um, and have shown to be beneficial. Some of the history of tapping. So this actually dates back to the 1970s. There was three different doctors who each discovered that if they had patients verbally focusing on a problem they were struggling with, while they were simultaneously tapping on acupressure points, it brought them a lot of relief. And so one of them in particular, Dr. George Callahan, started to explore this further. And he coined, a term, coined the term tapping um, originally as a technique called thought field therapy or TFT. Um, and from my understanding, this was a much more complex treatment than what we know now as tapping. It had different, um, you tapped on different points depending on what the pro different problems were. It was a lot more difficult to administer. And in the 1990s, one of his students 
whose name was Gary Craig. He was an engineer. Um, he also had a master's in neurolinguistic programming. He noticed that when Dr. Callahan's patients, um, even if they didn't do the techniques correctly, if they weren't tapping on necessarily the right points, they were still getting a lot of relief. So he thought maybe we can simplify this and make it into something that's a lot easier to teach and apply. And he applied some of his neurolinguistic programming concepts to it as well and coined the term or the, the technique, emotional freedom technique, which is what most of us now know as tapping. And from my understanding, it really hasn't changed much since the 1990s. Um, and we've seen a lot of um, positive results from it. I would say more recently, it's, become, it's coming more into the mainstream. Um, in 2008, there was a documentary that Nick and Jessica Ordner, who are brother, sister, pair put out, they traveled around the country and um, interviewed 10 different people who were all um, sort of well-known that used tapping. And that brought a lot of exposure to this technique. And I think over the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen it a lot more in the mainstream, different celebrities using it, you, you know, read about it. Um, and it, it's really over this time, probably the last 10 years that the research has really started to explode as well. Um, so it's something that I think is probably on the forefront as, as being a technique that's regularly recommended in medical circles like meditation is now probably um, in the very near future. All right, we'll talk a little bit about the physiology. So how do we think this actually works? So there's a few different potential ways to think about it. So first is just thinking about it from a Chinese medicine perspective. We're using these acupuncture, acupressure points and they're along meridians. And the theory behind these meridians is that these are areas through which energy flows in our bodies. And the thought is that blocks and energy flow through these meridians cause or lead to ill health and tapping, you know, putting pressure on these points, similar to how acupuncture um, affects these points helps to restore that energy flow. So that's sort of how we think it works from a Chinese medicine perspective. We also know that tapping on these specific points um, helps to calm the amygdala, which is um, in our brainstem, which is associated with most of our strong emotions, things like fear and arousing that fight or flight response and putting our body into a stress state. And this tapping tends to calm that response. And then there's also just the idea of mindfulness. So by tapping on these certain points, we're drawing attention to our body, to our breath and taking our attention away from some of the thoughts and emotions that are causing us to have stress. So those are some of the, the thoughts about why this works. Next, I wanna go through some of the research and then we'll get into some um, actual tapping ourselves. So a few, I just pulled a few of the studies that were most interesting um, to me. So this one is a randomized control trial looking specifically at tapping in um, veterans. Oh, let's see, what just happened? I lost my screen, there we go. All right, we're back on. Um, looking at tapping in veterans who had been diagnosed with PTSD. So they took about 60 veterans with this PTSD diagnosis and they randomized them to either a EFT group or to a standard of care group. And the EFT group, they got six hour long training sections in EFT or tapping. And the standard of care, so they got the standard of care treatment. For PTSD. And they found that after about a month, those patients in the EFT group, 90% of them no longer met the criteria for PTSD, which is pretty incredible. While in the standard of care group, only 4% um, didn't meet the criteria anymore. And then they found that this was actually a sustained response. So in the end, um, three months later, still 86% of those patients were in remission. And then six months later, 80% were still in remission. So it seems like something that was a sustained response. It wasn't just an immediate response to those training sessions. This review looked at, this was a systematic review. So it looked at 20 different studies that were investigating emotional freedom technique for depression treatment. And it summarized all of these studies. And what they found was that emotional freedom technique was superior to treatment as usual um, for depression. And that it worked well in the treatment timeframes ranging from anywhere from one to 10 sessions. Um, they found on average, the symptoms of depression were reduced by about 40%. Um, and that it was effective in a variety of different settings and populations. So showing a lot of promise for depression as well. This study I thought was super interesting. It was just more recent from 2019 and they wanted to look at not only how does 
tapping reduced symptoms of anxiety, depression, PTSD, pain, cravings, but also is there actually a physiological change that's happening? So they did, they measured blood work. They looked at things like cortisol. They looked at um, biometrics, things like um, resting heart rate, HRV, blood pressure. And they did find that those who engaged in tapping had a improvement in many of these markers. So this, there was 200 patients in this study and 30 of them actually had the blood work done. Um, but across those 200 patients, there was significant reductions in anxiety, depression, PTSD, pain, cravings, improvements in happiness. And then in some of the blood measures, say they looked at something called salivary immunoglobulin A, which is a marker of immune function that improved by 113%. Cortisol, which is our stress hormone was reduced by 37%. And then we also saw reductions in heart rate and blood pressure as well, which are generally signs of decreasing that stress response. So I thought that was super interesting that it's not just that we're seeing improvements based on, you know, questionnaires about people's symptoms, but we're actually seeing this in a physiological way. And then this is the last study that I wanted to show. This is a very small study, but I think interesting, um, especially given our focus on DNA. And so in this study, they looked at DNA expression and differences in DNA expression between a emotional freedom technique group and a control group. And what they found was that there were different genes that were being expressed in those who practiced EFT, and it was significant. And those genes had to do to had to do with immunity, um, inflammation, as well as certain neuronal processes in the brain. So it sort of makes sense from a mechanistic standpoint that we're seeing different gene expression, making you know resulting in these differences in symptoms and physiology. So overall, lots of exciting research going on in emotional freedom technique. Cool. Who is excited to try? <laughs> All right, we've got, I can't see too many of you on video, but I see at least some people. So first I'd like to just review what these points are and then we'll kind of go through a how-to of the process together. And then I have a um, sort of a video that will lead us through a more involved tapping session. So first let's just talk about the points. So the points that are used, you'll notice a lot of these have two, they're um, symmetricals. So they have two points on different sides of the body. It's not necessary to tap on both of them at the same time, but you can, if you want to, I like to tap on both just, I don't know, it makes me feel more even, but um, you can just tap on one or the other if you like. Um, all of these tapping sessions are gonna start by tapping on the side of the hand or what was traditionally called the karate chop point. So you'll just take like two or three fingers and you'll start top, tapping on the side of your hand. That's the first point. And this is kind of where we're gonna set our intention for the tapping session. After that, we're gonna to move to the eyebrow point. So you can tap either one side or both sides, but just at the point where your eyebrow, like the very edge of your eyebrow on the, in the middle, you're just gonna tap there. And then we're gonna to go to side of the eye, which is just on the side of your eye. It's not all the way back by your temple, but right um, on the side of your eye, kind of that bony area. Then we're gonna to go to under the eye, right underneath your eye. You'll go under the chin. So this one, I usually just use one hand right between your nose and the top of your lip, or sorry, this is under the nose. Then we're gonna go to the chin right below your bottom lip. We'll go to the collarbone. So you can feel your collarbone here, the inside of it, you're gonna go just below that collarbone and you can tap with all four fingers. And then from there, you're gonna tap under your arm. So you probably can't see me too well, but underneath, right underneath your armpit, sort of at the bra line for women is where you're going to tap for under the arm. And then the last spot is the top of the head. And you can, again, take all four fingers and just top, tap right on the top of your head. So those are all the points that we're going to be using. Cool. All right. So let's go through now a how-to of what does this look like in practice. So first things first, obviously you want to find a quiet place. Um, depends how much you want people to be looking at you. If you're in public and you want to be tapping, um, the, I would also just recognize too, depending on what you're going to tap on, if it's something that could be, especially if you're bringing up something that could, has been traumatic in the plat in the past, or especially emotionally triggering, you might want to be aware of that and make sure that you have the right support around you, um, before you're tapping on that. Um, so first step then, once you have a quiet place is to acknowledge what's wrong and measure the intensity. So 
this could be anything. This could be, I'm feeling really anxious. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm stressed. Um, it could be, I have back pain. It could be, I'm really craving eating a lot of sugar right now. And I don't really want to eat a lot of sugar. Any of those things, just identifying what's wrong is the first step. And then measuring that on a one to 10 scale of how intense is it? So if I'm feeling, you know, I'm just going to give a very general example here. I feel stressed and maybe my stress feels like it's at a six out of 10 and that's where I'm going to start. So give everybody a minute just to think about maybe something that you might want to try this on. Um, just take a minute to check in. Like, what are you feeling? Any stress or pain in your body? And then choose what that's going to be in rate and intensity. Cool. Okay. So once we have that, the first part is going to be the setup. So it's the side of the hand. We're going to be tapping on the side of the hand or this karate chop point. And while we do this, you're going to repeat out loud. So you can feel free to repeat out loud. I think everybody's muted. Um, repeat out loud three times. So I'm, I'm tapping on stress. So I'm going to say, even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. And I'm going to repeat two more times. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. One more time. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. From here, we're going to move through the rest of the points, um, tapping five to seven times on each point and repeating a reminder phrase. So for me, I'm tapping on stress, so that's going to be stress. So next I'll go to the eyebrow point and I'll just repeat stress to the side of the eye, stress under the eye, stress under the nose, stress under the chin, stress collarbone, stress, under the arm, stress, and top of the head, all the stress. From there, you're going to just take a big deep breath, kind of check in again and see where does that stress fall now on a zero to 10 scale, where would you rate it now? So just take a minute and think about that. And then from there, we're going to repeat the cycle as many times as you want to with the goal of trying to reduce that intensity as low as it will go. And as you do that, if other thoughts or feelings or body sensations come up that are stronger, you can start tapping on those instead. So I think um, I'd love to just go through, maybe we'll go through this two more times just to give you a sense of what it feels like. And then, um, and then we'll move on from there. So I'm going to go through it. I'll just repeat out loud, but you guys can feel free to say your own, um, your own phrases out loud as well. So first step is that karate chop point. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now we'll go to the eyebrow stress, side of the eye, stress, under the eye, stress, under the nose, stress, chin, stress, collarbone, stress, under the arm, stress, and top of the head, all the stress. All right, another big deep breath and reassess where you're at. And we'll go one more time. Karate chop point, even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then we'll go to the eyebrow, stress, side of the eye, stress, under the eye, stress under the nose, stress, chin, stress, collarbone, stress, under the arm, stress, and top of the head, stress. One more time, big deep breath, just check in and compare where you're at now to when we started. Awesome. Cool. Would anybody be willing or interested in sharing what that experience was like or anything that they 
have previously experienced from, from trying tapping? Hey, Julie, I'll share. Um, so I've never done this before. I've heard about it and I've wanted to try it and just didn't know where to start. So I'm glad you're doing this. Um, I did stress as well. Um, I'm really stressed right now with kids running around outside my room and stuff. So um, I'd say my stress was probably at like a seven when I started and it's probably down to like a three, three and a half maybe now. So I can definitely tell a difference and I feel more relaxed. That's awesome. So great to hear Sam and with kids running around nonetheless. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Anybody else? I found I got shivers that it actually sort of impacted my body physically, which I wasn't expecting. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. I think for me, just anecdotally and personally, I think there's so much about the emotion, like when we store emotions in our body, when we're, you know, we're stressed or angry or, or things that we kind of keep inside, it's hard to release them. And this seems to be a way through movement of releasing some of those emotions. And sometimes it can come in different ways. Sometimes it can be um, just the feeling. Sometimes it can be some more like shaking or like, um, like you said, getting some chills. Um, sometimes I've definitely started crying. So there's a lot of different ways our bodies release those. And Julie, I can share for a second too. Um, I'd actually tried this before, but I had forgotten the technique. So I know that when I had initially learned the technique, it really helped a lot. And then once I forgot it, I would still just try like tapping, you know, like I'd be like, okay, tap under my eyes, you know, and yeah. even just that little bit also helped relieve some of the stress. So now I'm glad to have the reminder of the, um, the technique, but I know that even just the little bit when I can't remember everything does help. That's awesome, Kara. And thanks for sharing. I think because Sometimes we can say, oh gosh, I don't remember how to do it the right way. So maybe I shouldn't do it, but so true. Even if you do some tapping, even if it's not all the right points or not the right order or whatever, it still can have a big impact. So thanks for sharing that. I've been doing this for about a year um, and I use the app that the Ortners have mm -hmm. and there's quite a few free offerings on there. But what made me a believer is that one evening I was extremely congested, couldn't sleep, both nostrils stuffed up. And I thought, what the heck? So as I'm tapping, one side clears up and within a few minutes after tapping, the other side clears up and it was amazing. There you go. That's awesome. I wouldn't have thought about that, but it's such a great idea. There's so many. I'm, ex I'm excited to use it for cravings. I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. Yeah. Me too. I actually hadn't thought about that either. And as I was putting this presentation together, I thought, wow, I'm going to start doing that because I've noticed a lot of times I'll go down and get a snack in the middle of the day, mostly because I'm bored or procrastinating. And <laughs> I think maybe if I do a tapping before it might help. <laughs> I, I could feel like a release coming up from my lower body all the way up. And I think each time it went a little bit higher is, is how I felt. And, and yeah, I, this was a really effective demonstration because I've heard about it and I probably spent more time trying to, uh, of, you know, ignoring it or kind of wondering where I could learn about it and all that than just this exercise, you know, learning it was just so, you know, time efficient and effective. So I really appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And I'm so glad you uh, had a cool experience too. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think that's a good segue into the last part that I wanted to talk about, which I can't remember, was it maybe it was Lee who brought this up, the Ordner's app. So um, the next one I have that, so Nick Ortner and his sister Jessica, who created that documentary, I think have done a lot for bringing tapping out into the mainstream and through books and presentations. And um, they more recently created an app. And that's what I've personally used. I've just found it to be really useful to to try and they're sort of, they put different spins on it. So it's not always the same formula that we just did um, for different things. It could be for overwhelm, it could be for sleep, um, but they put together 
this meditation, which was all about Ukraine, which I thought would be kind of a cool one for us to do together also to practice. Um, so I figured I would just play this one and we could all try it together. And then from there, we have a little bit of Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're good. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and press play. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Welcome to the okay. Envisioning Peace in Ukraine and the World Tapping Meditation. This tapping meditation will serve not only to reduce your personal stress and anxiety about the situation in Ukraine and violence in the world, but potentially make an actual difference in the outcome. It's based on something known as the Maharishi effect. The idea that individual brain waves can affect the collective consciousness. The exact science on how the brain waves of a small meditating group can affect the actions of the greater population hasn't been fully explained, but nearly 50 studies have been done on the subject and have been reported in prestigious publications such as the Journal of Crime and Justice. And whether you believe or we can prove that our work together makes a difference in the actual outcome or not, in this difficult time, adding some love and positivity in our own hearts can only be a good thing. There's two parts to this process. First, we'll recognize and acknowledge our own stress, sadness, anxiety, or anger about what's happening and begin to release it. And from there, once we've reduced that and have begun to create peace in our bodies and coherence in our brain waves, we'll use that energy to envision a peaceful outcome. And if you're new to tapping, don't worry about doing everything perfectly. You're amazing for being here and contributing to changing the world. So let's begin by tuning into your body and the stress you're feeling right now when it comes to everything going on in the world and specifically in Ukraine. Go ahead and take a moment to mark what your current stress level is on a scale of zero to 10. And let's take a gentle breath in and out. Tapping gently on the side of the hand Repeat after me, either in your mind or out loud. As always, we start by focusing on the negative statements, the truth, and turn towards the positive. So tapping on the side of the hand, even though I'm feeling so stressed out about what's happening in Ukraine, I choose to relax and feel safe now. Still on the side of the hand, even though I can't help thinking about everything going on in the world. I give myself permission to relax. And one more time on the side of the hand, even though I'm so worried about the state of the world. I choose to relax and find peace now. Tapping through the points, eyebrow. I'm so stressed out about Ukraine. Side of the eye, what's happening? Under the eye, and what does it all mean? Under the nose, I'm exhausted from the past two years. Under the mouth, and now this. Collarbone, all this anxiety. Under the arm, about everything that's going on. Top of the head, and what's happening to people around the world. 
back to the eyebrow. It's safe to acknowledge this fear. Side of the eye and how tired and overwhelmed I am. Under the eye and how powerless I feel. Under the nose and with all these feelings. Under the mouth, I choose to feel safe now. Collarbone, I connect with my heart. Under the arm and begin to find calm in my body. Top of the head, feeling safe now. Now let's go back to the eyebrow point and just tap gently. I'll guide you through the points here. No need to say anything out loud. Hopefully you've begun to find a little peace in your mind and body. And of course, everything isn't fixed and these problems still remain. But for this moment in time, let's continue to find some peace in our hearts, grounded and safe. moving to the side of the eye. We're preparing our energy to be that catalyst for change in the consciousness of the world. With every tap and every breath, we align to the source of well-being, of love, of peace, of forgiveness. Under the eye, be the vessel feeling more connected to the universe, to God, to source, to yourself, to whatever you believe in. Under the nose, tapping gently, breathing calmly, more connected, noticing the muscles in your body relax, your jaw loosen, your shoulders drop and relax. Under the mouth, filling your body with the energy of love, of forgiveness, of hope, of joy, of peace. Collarbone, every cell in your body vibrating with peace. Feel that in your heart now. Raise your energy, raise your vibration, raise your consciousness preparing your energy to be that catalyst for change. Feel that energy rising within you. Under the arm, connected, grounded, safe. Feel that now. Top of the head, feel more peaceful than you've ever felt, more loving, than you've ever felt, more full of hope than you've ever felt. Feel that energy rising within you and getting ready to use this life force to make a change in the world. Moving to the eyebrow. Now you're ready to make a difference with all this beautiful energy swirling in your body with the peace in your mind and heart. Send out these peaceful feelings to Ukraine. Send out these peaceful feelings to those in power, making decisions about war and peace, simply sending love and peace. Side of the eye. Bathe these places of conflict with love and peace. Notice your energy, bringing comfort to those who need it. Under the eye, without specific outcomes or ideas, just bathing this conflict zone and the world with love and peace. 
with forgiveness. Notice the energy of forgiveness spreading throughout this conflict. Under the nose, you're doing amazing and you're not alone. There's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of other tappers, other meditators right now joining your energy. Feel connected to them. Feel that power of that collective force for good. Under the mouth, peace, love, forgiveness, hope, acceptance. You're raising the consciousness of the world right now. Collarbone, bathing Ukraine in love, bathing everyone involved in love. Peace, love, forgiveness, hope, acceptance. Feel that in your body now, radiate it outwards. What if peace happened? What if the consciousness of the world shifted? Imagine that now. Under the arm, you're amazing. Keep going. Imagine peace. Imagine peace. Imagine peace. Top of the head, even more. Imagine peace. Imagine peace. Imagine peace. And you can gently stop tapping and take a few gentle breaths in and out. Noticing how you feel. Sitting quietly. Imagining peace. Feeling that peace in your body. Spreading that peace to the world. And when you're ready, go ahead and mark your current stress level about the situation in Ukraine on a scale of zero to 10. And remember, you can still be concerned. You can still care as you've clearly shown by doing this work without holding on to that stress in your body. You can care and you can feel good and envision peace. You can care and you can send love. Go ahead and mark your new number. My friend, thank you. You're amazing. You're amazing for taking this time to make a difference. I truly believe that the work we just did changed something. Even if it's one tiny step towards peace, you're incredible for taking the time to do this work. All right. Coming on back here. So that one was obviously different than the first example that we did. Um, and there's a lot of different sort of spins on this, but wanted to give you another, another example and thought that was something that was timely. Um, we have about five minutes left. And so I'd love to, again, open up if anyone wants to share experience from that last session or ask any questions. Um, the only thing I have left is a couple of slides Welcome to the oop, um, about sort of how to continue practice tapping. Um, one being the app um, that Lee brought up. It's called the Tapping Solution. There's a, a lot of free tapping meditations on there. There's doing exactly what we just did today. There's a great website um, called EFT International, which has sort of a, some introductory guides and manuals that can direct you. 
um, and a guide to EFT practitioners if you're looking to work with a practitioner. Um, and then just like we talked about too, it can be as simple as just tapping on a few spots on your, on your face. You don't have to do it exactly the right way for it to have an effect. Um, or doing that, that um, sequence that we all went through together that you can do at any time um, in the moment. Cool. Let's see, I have a few comments. I believe the recording is going to be sent out afterwards, so it'll be available to anybody who got that question. Any other questions? Anyone want to share their experience from that last one we just did? Mm, Kelly asked a great question. Does it matter how hard you tap or how fast or slow you tap? I don't think it matters too much. Um, really, whatever is comfortable for you, it should be a pretty gentle tap. Um, and then whatever piece feels comfortable to you. It's really just about the you know, the pressure that you're putting on those points. Wonderful. All right. Well, if there's no other specific questions. I'm seeing lots of great comments here. Um, thank you to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join. I hope you found it beneficial. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. We'll have the recording. Um, definitely check out you know, the app if you're looking for another tool or just see how you can apply this in your daily life. So thank you all. Hope you have a great night.